Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is the first of what I hope are many Sunday services. There's been a lot of requests for us to have some sort of online Sunday meeting, and I've been working with three other people to try to get this going. Unfortunately, it's been rather slow going, and so I've decided to just go ahead and move forward and make this video to explain what we're going to be doing and how we're going to be doing it so that all those that would like to get involved may do so. Now, the first thing I want to bring up is the fact that in the Fellowship of Christ, we don't have any buildings currently, so we are a home church. And I use that term very loosely because I don't like calling us a church because we're more of an ecumenical movement. But the original Christians met in Acts 113 in an upper room of a house, just like Joseph Smith met in the upper room of a house to give the temple endowments and do other religious services. And originally, the church was organized in someone's house, I believe the Whitmer's house. In the New Testament, it talks about the saints meeting in someone's house in Romans 16, 3 through 5, and Colossians 4, 15. And I, I really think that we're at a point in our history as Christians where we're moving away from the, we, we had, you know, congregations and they kept growing and we had mega churches and we're, we're kind of moving away from all of that, something a bit more personal. I can tell you that the revelation that we received for building temples and synagogues, the fellowships and tabernacles, is that the main rooms in, in the center, there's three rooms, you're supposed to be able to open them up so that you have a big long room for, for services. Those three rooms are 15 feet by 15 feet in the tabernacle and synagogues, 30 feet by 30 feet in temples. So those aren't really that big. It seems that the Lord wants us to say, stay small so that in our communities, people don't get lost. And I know that right now in the fellowship, a lot of people feel lost. That's why they're here. The Lord's led them to the fellowship of Christ because they're not really sure where to go. And being an ecumenical movement, we're more of a transition point. People leaving one particular branch of the Latter-day Saint movement or any other part of Christianity and moving into another. And that's perfectly okay. That's, that's what we're here for. And I know there are people that talk to me and they feel really bad because they just don't feel ready to, to get involved. Well, you're not here to serve us. We're here to serve you. So please don't worry about that. The reason why we're doing this is because we know that there's a need for worship with other people. And we can't all meet at the same time. We have people in Australia, in Europe, and you know, all over the time zones, the five time zones of the United States. In Africa, I have a brother who messages me on Facebook every night after I go to bed saying, good morning. In the morning I wake up and I say, good morning. Because our time zones, they, they aren't in sync and that's fine. So by recording this, we can play this recording whenever needed. Now, I know that in the fellowship, the book of the law of the Lord states that book of the law of the Lord states that we should be worshiping on the true Sabbath. And so there are saints that worship on Saturdays. And the doctrine of the saints, the revelation from Joseph Smith III says that we worship on the Lord's Day, on Sundays. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's fine, too. The reason why these videos are going to go live on Sunday is simply because I am a father. I have seven children. I work full time. And the reality is that the Saturday is the easiest day for me to put this together so that it's ready for Sunday. So if you do your worship on Saturdays, please do not feel like you're being slighted. Just save the video that I make on Sunday and use it on Saturday. And that way everyone can be involved. 
I have goals. I would love to see us get to a point where we're doing live Zoom again. Well, actually, we've moved to Google, but Google Meets, but you know what I'm saying. I'd love to see us do this live. I'd love to see us do this in person, but we've got to start somewhere, and we're going to start here, and eventually, we can get people together that can meet at the various time zones and, and take charge of their own meetings. We will do that. We have a congregation. Well, we have a ministry set. We have ministries set up all over the world at this point. Believe me, I understand. I, I work full time. I get it. it. It's hard to do all this stuff when we're still small. But as we grow, things will get bigger. <laughs> as we grow, things will get better. Both are correct. So what I'd like to do right now in this, the opening here is outline our order of service and let you know what the needs are if you, felt, if you feel moved by the Spirit to help. I will be setting up a Dropbox. You can, if you're already on the Fellowship Slack account, then it'll be posted there. If you're on Facebook, message me. I can put you as part of the group and it'll be there. Or you can just email me, info at cjccf.org and you know if you feel impressed to read a scripture read a scripture if you feel impressed to say a prayer say a prayer if you feel impressed to share a message share a message and we will work that in and use it for these services so the way we're planning on doing this is first there'll be an opening and if you want to sing just pause the video and do that in your home. It's We've tried doing that on Zoom. It gets a bit messy. And it's I'm not sure we're at a point right now to where we can go and find Creative Commons licensed music every Sunday to do this. So to keep this simple, if you'd like to sing, please do so in, in, your, in the comfort of your home or wherever you are. And that's wonderful. Music and hymns, those are a prayer to the Lord. Once you unpause, we will read a scripture. I'm not going to read a scripture today because we're going to be using Deuteronomy 6.4 as our scripture. And at that point, there will be a prayer request. If you have a prayer request, you can go to our Facebook group and you can submit your prayer request there. Or if you'd like to be more private, just email us at info at cjccf.org. That's I-N-F-O at cjccf.org. I will not be naming names unless you point blank ask me to. So just describe your situation and, and I will address the congregation listening so that when they pause for the prayer, you can pray on that. Then after that, we're going to have the moment of unity, and that's when we're going to read the Shema. That's Deuteronomy 6.4. That's why we're not going to be reading a scripture today, because I'm going to combine all of that together. So the way we used to do it was we had a unity leader that would, we had one person that would read the Shema, that we'd say it back together. The unity leader would lead us in lighting a candle or placing something at the altar before us so that we can at the same time unify in, with our, our symbol of unity. Here, we're just going to do the Shema, and I'm going to pause. And if you'd like to read the Shema, you're welcome to and record that and also record yourself pausing. And during the pause, if you would like to be a part of the moment of unity, just repeat the portion of the Shema that's in English. And then we will have a message that's based on the original scripture that was read. So if you read a scripture, then myself or someone else will give a message based on that scripture. Afterwards, we will have the sacrament. Uh, Christine will be reading the sacrament prayer presently. If you feel, if, if you hold the priesthood and you feel impressed to read the sacrament prayer, then please get in touch with me and we can set that up and talk about that afterwards after the prayer is read pause the video and take the sacrament we'll do 
We're going to read both prayers back to back. And the way we traditionally do it is we read both prayers and then we take the sacrament communion. If you would like to pause between each prayer and give the bread and give the water, that's fine. And what we used to do was play music as a moment of meditation afterwards. So I would encourage you to, after you've taken the communion, don't just unpause the video. Take a moment to reflect on the atonement of Jesus Christ and how it's affected your life and how you can continue growing in Christ's grace. Afterwards, there will be a either a closing prayer or a scripture of some, some sort of, of ending, basically. If you feel impressed by the Spirit to say a prayer, you know, that's the closing prayer, again, let me know. We'll use that link to, to uh, capture those so we can put them on the videos. Beyond that, if you'd like to say your own closing prayer there in your house or in your, your synagogue. By the way, a synagogue is a group of people meeting in a house, technically speaking. But synagogues are also what we call branches here in the Fellowship of Christ. It's what the Lord calls it in the Doctrines of the Saints. So that that is our plan, and that's what we are going to do moving forward. So I would like to begin, and, and I'm going to apologize ahead of time if there's if the video seems a little jumpy. My uh, camera keeps turning off the recording, so I have to restart. We're now going to move to the unity portion of our service. I'm going to read the Shema first in Hebrew, and then in English, and then I will pause for those that would like to repeat the Shema back in English. Shema Yisrael Yiva Elohenu Yiva Echad Hear, O Israel, Yiva is our God, Yiva is unity. When I was originally thinking about what to talk about for this first sermon, I really wanted to read a scripture that talked about the church being in the house because I felt that people need to know it was okay that they weren't meeting in a large church building. But as I was praying this morning, I felt impressed by the Spirit to use the Shema as the scripture because, well, because the Spirit said so, but I feel that the reason the Spirit says so is because I, it's more important that we understand why we meet in Christ's name, why we worship, than it is to understand where we worship. The name of this movement, it's an ecumenical movement, is the Church of Jesus Christ in Christian Fellowship. I received a revelation back in November of 2015 giving me that name. And that name was confirmed again in another revelation. That was in 2020. But we call ourselves the Fellowship of Christ because people really get caught up on the word church. To us, when we say church, we mean you, we mean me, we mean the body of Christ. We don't mean an organization, we don't mean a creed or a set of dogma, we don't mean a building, we mean every individual. We, we are the church. But what are we a church of? What do, what do we, who, do we, who do we belong to? We belong to Jesus Christ, so therefore we are the church of Jesus Christ. What do we do? We fellowship together as Christians. And how do we do it? Currently, we do it online. It is important that we understand that we are not alone. I've said before, and I'll say it again, that to me is the core message of the Fellowship of Christ. 
if we're going to love God and we're going to love our neighbor, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ, then we must be united in Christ. The Shema can easily be broken down into three parts. Hear, O Israel. Hear. Listen. Pay attention. The word translated here, it can literally mean here, but can also mean focus. Pay attention. Who? Israel. Well, who is Israel? It's not just various tribes, the children of Jacob. All those that come into Christ are Israelites. So everyone, Jews also, I should say, so all those that come unto Yavah, whether through Jesus Christ or another way, we are all Israel. What is it we're supposed to hear? That Yavah is our God. We know this because it's part of the Ten Commandments. First one. But then the third part is the part that is probably the most important. Yiva is unity. In the Book of Mormon, Jesus tells the Lehites that contention is not of him. But we already know that because of the Shema. We know that because God is unity. When Jesus came, he came to unite us. Yes, there are parts in the Bible where he talks about brother against brother and sister against sister. But those that are with him are one. The brother against brother and sister against sister are those that will attack us for being one and try to divide us from being one. We need to, as Latter-day Saints, stop the dogmatism, stop the focus on creedal warfare, stop the attack on our brothers and sisters because of the way that they were created eternally, and stop seeking sin. We don't need to divide, because when you divide, you do not conquer. Not in the gospel of Jesus Christ. When we start categorizing people and saying, well, these people fit here, they're sinners, they can be here or they can't. These people are sinners, they can be here or they can't. We're playing God. We're not following the teachings of God. And I know the Shema is important because of the revelation I received for the fellowship on the tabernacle and the temple says that on our altars we should have the scriptures open to the Shema. That's how important this is. On my altar, I've got a Bible open to the very center, in the very center rather, of the altar. And the Shema is right there because that unity is what ties everything together. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. It doesn't matter when you are watching this. I want you to know that you are one with us. That you are a part of this fellowship. Those of you who are still struggling with your spiritual PTSD, believe me, I get it. We all get it. This is for you, because I want you to know that you're not alone. God wants you to know that you're not alone. If you need to talk, I'm here for you. And there are other people that have reached out to me that are willing to talk to you too. I can't promise you that we have all the answers, but I can promise you that we will listen 
and that we will love you. So at this point, I'm going to make a call for action. Because the gospel of Jesus Christ is an action. Salvation, atonement, these are actions. Whatever it is that is in your life that is making you feel like you are not a part of the Church of Jesus Christ. Set it aside. Ignore it. Or embrace it, depending on what it is. But know that nothing, nothing can stop you from being a part of this church. Nothing can stop you from being a part of the body of Christ. And when I say this church, I don't mean the fellowship of Christ. I mean from being a Christian. You are loved. Satan wants to deceive you. He wants you to think that you're all alone. That no one's here for you. No one's coming for you. The reason why the Thursday thoughts and these Sunday meetings and the conferences are so important to me is because I want you to know that you're not alone. That every blog post I write is for you. Every service Every meeting that we have is for you. To make sure you know that you're loved. To make sure you know that you're a part of the Shema. You're a part of that unity. How is Yuval one? He's one with Israel. Is one with the creation. We're all in this together. So please don't believe the lies. Please don't think that you're alone or that no one cares about you. Because every thing that we put out in fellowship is a love letter to you. Personally. We understand that not everybody can get involved and help out. But please know that those of us that are, are struggling with everything we have to do so to ensure that you know this fact. That's my message to you. And I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to his mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ as individuals and as a community. Worshiping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the Sacrament, Ministry, Outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee, in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he hath given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do so in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen.
Elohim Shaddai, we bow our heads before thee at this time to thank thee for all of your many blessings. To thank you for this technology and this opportunity we have to meet together in your name. As Jesus did, we ask that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And to do so, we ask you to please bless us with the light of Christ that it may shine forth through us into the world. We ask you to please bless us with the humility that comes with doing so. We ask you to bless us with kindness, with peace, with understanding. That we will accept all as you have accepted us. That we will reach our hands out to those in need just as you have reached your hand out to us. That your love and your gospel will spread like a fire throughout the earth. That Zion may be built and peace proclaimed and achieved. We ask you to please bless us. You have called us a prophetic people. And all those that have a testimony of the Book of Mormon, that have a testimony of Jesus Christ through the Book of Mormon, this testimony was gained through the spirit of prophecy and revelation. We ask that you open our mouths, that our utterances will be prophetic, that we will see and that we will know, that we won't merely seek truth, but we will find it, we will live it, and we will share it. There are many in this world, Father, that are hurting. You know that the pain and suffering causes you and the mother and the son and the spirit to weep. And we weep with you. As finite beings, we cannot do all things. But please bless us with the power and the opportunity to do what we can. And to be there for those in need. That your light may shine forth. That the glory will be yours. And that the world will be redeemed. Help us to find peace in ourselves so that we can proclaim peace to the world. Help us to be the Israel that you called us to be and the Zion that we desire to be. Help us to build Zion in our hearts that we may have Zion in our lives. These things we pray to thee humbly. In the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, so mote it be. Amen. I want to thank everyone for watching this video. And once again, ask that those that do feel prompted by the Spirit to get involved, please reach out to us. You don't have to say anything. Just ask for the link and drop in whatever the Lord has shared with you so that we can share it with everyone else.
That's how we become a fellowship. That's how we are a fellowship. Is by sharing what we have and what we know with one another. And that is the very message of Zion. So, again, thank you for coming. We look forward to many more Sunday sermons to come. God bless.